Ladies and gentlemen, it's the story that continues giving Miss Lori Vallow. Now, the sister of Tammy Daybell. Now, Tammy Daybell was the wife of Chad Daybell before Lori. Now, the sister of Tammy tells a very eerie and odd story of how Chad behaves right after she dies mysteriously. The funeral is quick. A lot of people weren't able to make it. It was really weird the way he did it. And his excuse was always that, oh, I thought that's how she wanted it to be done. Now, let's get straight into this because it's quite wild. Talking about your sister, Tammy. And this is, in fact, a photo of Tammy, correct? Yes, it is. And I just want to remind the jury, um, you and Tammy are the only two girls in your family. Correct. And... Prior to her moving to Idaho, you two lived very close. Yes. And you saw each other daily. Every day. We talked a little bit about what Tammy was doing right before she moved up to Idaho as far as employment. Do you know when she moved to Idaho if she was employed? Um, they moved at the end of the school year, so it was like June, right after school got out. Did she end up finding employment later? Uh, they Damn, lady, she asked you two questions. Did she find employment? Like, keep up. They did that uh, next school year. She found employment at another school. So she continued to work in the school system? Yes, she loved uh, working with students. Okay, so Tammy Daybell, the wife of Chad, loved kids, you know, very into kids and stuff. And keep in mind, this guy was really religious. So, you know, most religious people, they, um, especially the women, they like the kids and they want to nurture, right? So I'm pretty sure she was a great lady. Didn't, didn't have a great guy. Do you know, did she also continue to work with computers? Yes. Um, in fact, uh, she helped one of the schools she was at get a whole new computer lab because uh, they didn't have the equipment that they needed. And, um, you know, it was a big deal. So. And I, I know we talked about how you found out about her passing. Yes. And we talked a little bit about her coming to visit in October. Yes. And you said on that visit, she seemed healthy to you? Uh, yes, she did. Uh, Tammy had been sick a few years prior uh, to, you know, to this happening where she'd had a bout of depression. Um, and, you know, as we do with any family, I always do visual checks on, you know, your loved ones. Uh, when you see them later to see how, how are you doing, you look at them and see. And Tammy looked very healthy and Hey, depression is a hell of a thing, man. You know, if someone's really going through it, the best thing you can do is just try to be as helpful as possible and not be any condescending to them because it's like a sickness, you know? And was doing very well. So, I, you know, it was, it was just one of those visual things that you do when you see your loved ones. And she did not look sick at all. And when she'd been sick before, had she talked to you about it? Um, yes. And... On this visit, did she indicate anything about not feeling well? No. And I think you said it was actually the contrary. She was telling you about different activities. Yeah, different she activities. Involved. She just had a wrist issue. Like, her wrist was bothering her. That was the only thing that she brought up. Okay, so she's clearly... <clears throat> sorry. She's clearly active, you know, telling her about all the things she's doing. Oh, I sprained my wrist too. Damn, this and that. So, clearly moving around active. No sign of, you know of imminent death, I should say. No sign of her not being able to do well in the coming months. And you found out the morning of her death? Yes. And was that October 19th of 2019? Yes, it was. When was her funeral? It was the following Tuesday. Wow. Okay, so, no. Okay, so she died, and they did the funeral seven days later. Now, I will say I have seen some funerals where the person dies, and they do the funeral that fast i i do find it strange but i don't think every one of those people are also killing their spouses so in that case i don't know if i can call that odd but it might be odd for their family it was really quick and did that seem odd to you how quick the funeral was yes it did did you have any discussions with Chad about that? Yes, we. I asked him uh, on a phone call of why we were 
you know, doing things so quickly. And he told me that the, he thought that's what Tammy would have wanted. Was See what I mean? To not have all the fuss. Uh, I also asked him why he was burying her in Springville instead of Rexburg uh, because his her their kids are in Rexburg. He is in Rexburg. I mean, it's his spouse. I'm, you know, I'm a sister. We're close. I like having her down there with me, but I'm not her, you know, her husband or the or their mom. And he said that he thought that it would be better if she was down there because it was cold in Rexburg and under ice and snow all year, and they wouldn't get to visit her as much. If that if that's not the most bullshit answer. Oh, yeah, it's snowing out here. So I put her all the way in a different city so that we could go and visit her. It makes zero sense. Go put on a jacket and go visit her. What are you talking about? I would much prefer put on a jacket and go see the deceased five minutes away than go to another city. What is he talking about? Were some family members unable to attend because the funeral was so quick? Yes. Uh, several of his side of the family and some other of our family were unable to to come because they were out of state or out of the country. <laughs> Did that include a son of Chad and Tammy's? Yes, their son was on a mission in Africa. He was on a mission. Keep in mind, um, you're, if you're coming from a church, you already know what a mission is. But for a bunch of church people, if, um, you know, if you're going to church and to get, like, some type of a recognition from the church, you have to go on a mission to, like, a poorer city or country and like help out, teach them something, do medical help, stuff like that. Now, see, I'm from Belize, so I'm on, um, you see a lot of that happening because you'll see like the missions people come in and they're kind of just seen as like, oh, the people who give you stuff, let's go, let's go say hi to the people that give you stuff because that's kind of what they're seen as. So that's what their son is on right now, is a, a mission. Again, they're on a mission because Chad Daybell, super religious. We'd also talked about uh, the summer prior to Tammy's passing that you'd noticed a difference in Chad. Correct. He seemed more distant and less wanting to talk to us about things. And we just didn't know if it was because they were living farther away or he just, we didn't know what was going on. It was really different. Well, yeah, I at mean, some point, if he's guilty, he doesn't he doesn't really want to talk to the sisters, you know, to the other sister. Hell no. Nah, he'll, he'll want to stay away from you. Did you learn that Chad had been remarried? Uh, yes, we learned uh, it was actually uh, once one month to the day of her burial is when I found out about it. Did you later one learn when month. he actually gotten married? Uh, yeah, because I. I told my husband to find out because Chad was still speaking, you know, he was talking to my husband at that point, And I said, you find out when he actually got married, because I feel like that's very quick, even for somebody who's grieving. I'm like, there's you don't get married four weeks after you just buried your wife of almost 30 years. You 30 years, bro. Keep that in mind. They were together for 30, damn, I didn't know that. Keep that in mind. 30 years. Shit. My parents were married for 20 years. 30 years. Gosh. Man, that's crazy. And then he's remarried like that. Something is wrong. Now, the police can't come in and say like, hey, you, re you did that really fast. You're under arrest. But everybody knows something is wrong about that picture. You just don't do that. And we found out it had only been two weeks after she had been buried. Oh, no, that was set up. No, either that was an affair, which I don't even think it was, or that was set up. He must have said, oh, God told me I had to kill my wife and get you a week later. What is going on? And we were devastated. That's At some crazy. point, did Chad indicate or did you learn the name of his new wife? Yeah, he told us her name was Lori Ryan and that her previous husband had a heart attack. And so she had been grieving a spouse as well. And that's 
why they connected was that they were both grieving the passing of spouses. And did you... Lori Ryan. No, sir. That was Lori Vallow because the person she shot was Vallow and she was married to a Vallow. End up learning another name associated with Lori Ryan. I did. I... As any good sister did, I went to the internet to go see who this woman was. And the. And I'll the, object, Your Honor, to anything quoted from the internet. And, Your Honor, I'm not asking her to quote. I'm simply asking what she learned, and not for the truth of the matter, but as to why she did what she did next. I'll overrule the objection. <laughs> wow. That little statement that lawyer did to combat the objection, crazy. She's like, it doesn't even have to be true. I just want to know what she did next. So it could be false, true, and it got through. See, these small little things are what lawyers are paid for, which is why I encourage everybody, get you a lawyer on retainer. You could be the most law-abiding person in the world. Get a lawyer on retainer. It doesn't hurt. It's just a bill that hurts, but it'll, you'll smile when you get into some trouble, and that, that man is right there on the phone. Trust me. Um, I discovered her the, her name was tied to Vallo, and it brought up newspaper articles about a man in Arizona who had been shot in his own home by a brother-in-law. And I took that to my husband, and I said, I think this is the same woman that he's married. Uh, he did not die from a heart attack. And did you... And based on that, did you end up having a conversation with Chad at some point? Uh, we've ha had multiple conversations with Chad. Eventually, the last conversation that I've ever had with Chad was in December. Um, the last conversation I've ever had with Chad, indicating that she don't fuck with that boy no more. He is a black sheep. He is shunned from the family. He is not brother. He is Chad asked him to stop lying about what was going on because there was just so much information that had come to us from the police as well. And it was based on the information you'd learned from your search of the Internet and that the police had told you that led you to believe he was lying? Yes, because I had seen, you know, as I looked up Lori Vallow's name at that point, I had seen that they had listed, uh, I'd actually seen an obituary for Charles, where Kay Woodcock had commented that we will take good care of J.J., and I didn't know who J.J. was. Um, there was mention of another daughter, but it didn't say her name, and I thought, there's kids. In now there's kids involved. So I'll take good care of J.J. Obviously, that's J.J. and um, Tylee, and now they're with this monster, Chad Daybell. Now, this guy, I mean, 30 years, a wife of 30 years. Involved, and I didn't know anything about who they were, so. I'm just going to renew my objection. I don't know where we're getting this information from. Well, I will sustain that. It seems to be coming probably from a hearsay source at this point, Ms. Blake. After learning that information, did you ask Chad about whether or not Lori had children? Yes, I did. I asked, I asked him in a phone call. I said, so please tell me about this woman that you've married to replace my sister with. And he told me that... I can imagine the tone of voice. She did not call him like, would you please tell me? Nah, she's like, so who is this bitch that you replaced my sister with after two weeks, huh? Do, do they have kids? Nah, she was, she was on one for sure. She was not that calm. She had had a hard life and that... The he was like, no, nah, no, nah, no, no. She had a hard life. We're both grieving. We're no, oh, it's like relax. <laughs> the crazy sister, a lover, because man, I would be the crazy brother too. What is going on over here? I'd be pulling up on the house. Who is this? Who is this lady? Huh? Who is she? After thirty years, sir. Reason why they hadn't told me her name was because she was trying to, you know, stay away from the stigma of what had happened to her and I said well so please help me understand so now that you've married her are, you, are there children because I had seen the other information and I said are you going to be raising kids together you know Mark will be coming home from his mission 
and he told me no, that there's no children and that they were going to be empty nesters. They're going to be empty nesters. Now, this man is foreshadowing his future. And I think Lori is so susceptible to just some sort of like structure, it seems like, that he figured out that, hey, I can control this woman with this all this religion and all this structure that I've created. I can control her to the point of get rid of your kids. Let's just be let's just be empty nesters together. So this guy is a manipulator and he's a good one at it. I don't have any additional questions at this time, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Blake. Uh, Cross-examination. Ms. Is it William? Yes. Uh, you've been handed what's been marked as Exhibit C. Uh, do you recognize that document? Yes, I do. And what is it? It's my sister's obituary. Uh, do you know who wrote that? Um, I wrote it uh, along with some of my family members. And it Man, they're they're bringing up the obituary. I don't, I don't want to say it's a low blow, but why are we talking about... I mean, I guess all things are off. Talking about the case, all things are off, you know? Uh, who contributed to the obituary? Um, I know that Chad had given us some information, but my... Self and my parents had put it together. And is this exhibit a true and accurate copy of, of her obituary? Um, from what I can see, yes. So th the information in this obituary is that uh, Tammy Daybell passed away peacefully in her sleep. Do you see that? Yes. And, and where would you get that information? That was just from what Chad told us. Okay. If Chad is the only one who can say that, isn't that more suspicious on him? And so the information uh, that wasn't from a doctor's report, it wasn't from the police, that was just from what Chad told you? Correct. Okay. We were led to believe that she was sick and had died in her sleep. And then you talk about the family history here, and I think you've already mentioned that. We don't need to go through it. Um, but in her obituary talks about her interests in life, and I think you've talked about that as well. The uh, Tell me about this uh, book publishing company that uh, Chad and Tammy were involved with. Yes, they had started a company together, Spring Creek Books. And, and what did that do? Uh, they published books that Chad wrote, and they also published books from other authors. And uh, so was that Chad's full-time job? Uh, sometimes, yes, but he was mostly on the side. He also, uh, during the, some of the time, would work at the cemetery during part of this time that they had the company. Damn, he worked at a cemetery? Jeez, this dude is like the Grim Reaper for real. And I mean, he has a whole publishing company for books that he writes. I mean, does that not sound a little culty to you? Okay. And at, that, at one time, did that company go bankrupt? I guess they did. They had an issue with at what some time, distribution of books with Deseret Book um, because of how bookstores work that if they find that they aren't selling enough of them they can actually send a whole bunch of inventory back and since they were a small company uh, it caused them to lose some money financially when they sent you know extra books back that they had already printed for them so did your sister have to get a job other than spring book company right? correct when it went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I interrupted you. No. Um, and so... He's kind of like, I'm sorry if I interrupted you. Lady, slow down, okay? Slow down. The... Uh, did Chad get another job other than Springbook Company? Um, I believe so. That That's you know, when he worked for the cemetery. Okay. Do you know what year they moved to Rexburg, Idaho? Um, it would have been in, um, 
Oh my gosh. I don't remember the exact year, uh, to be honest. Around 2015, or is that too late or too early? I think that's too early. I'm sorry, I don't, I, I don't recall the exact year that was. Did you know how many years they lived in Rexburg before Tammy died? Um, at least f three to four. Okay. So she died in 2019, so maybe they lived in Idaho three or four years? Yes. And um, so you felt like when Chad and Tammy lived in Utah uh, that you were close to them and saw them frequently. Correct. And when they moved to Idaho, uh, you never that, saw them. Th th it became harder to stay in touch. Correct. Did uh, did Chad talk to you about his his near death experiences? Uh, yes, he did. Did he write books about those? Yes, he did. Uh, have you read those books? Um, only one of them. Uh, how would you describe his books? He had near-death experiences? What the fuck? About what, though? Like, we're not elaborating. Were you... Hit me up in the comments. What was his near-life, I mean, near-death experience? Because that sounds like a load of crap and content to make. He was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to make some books off of this here. And then they all got sent back. <laughs> um, very spiritual in nature. Uh, were they well received? Did he make money off of them? Um, he did make some money off of them, yes. I don't know the exact amount. And so uh, the... Made money. When did you first hear Chad talk about his near-death experiences? I actually don't recall it at a time for when that happened. Was it something before his book was published? Um, I believe he probably brought it up in conversation. Okay. We hold a lot of that stuff to be, you know, personal. So um, when people talk about their spiritual experiences, I, you know, I don't write that down. And but yet, chat. When people talk about their spiritual experiences, I, I start to tune out. So I couldn't tell you when he started telling me about this. That's what she should have said, because that's what you had in her mind to say. Dad was not keeping his experiences personal. He was writing books and going to conferences. And Correct. That. So he was trying to make money off of his, uh, what he'd call a spiritual experience. Uh, I, that's a complicated answer. Yeah. So, so you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't write down your spiritual experiences and try to make money off it. But that's what Chad Daybell did. That's neither a yes or no question for me. I. Okay. And so these that's conferences that Chad Daybell would go to go to speak at, would, would you go to those? No, no, I did not. What were the, some of those conferences called, do you know? Um, I know some of them were called Preparing a People. And and he would go and try to sell his books there. Yes. And he would go and talk to others about his spiritual experiences. Uh, I believe so. And you would talk to Chad and your sister about what he was doing. Uh, sometimes, but it didn't always come up in conversations. W was your sister uh, going to these conferences with him or was he going alone? No, he went alone mostly. Tammy didn't travel with him to those because she was working and raising children. So she had a job taking care of the kids and, he's and Chad was out trying to sell books. Correct. And do you know where he would go to try to sell his books? Uh, you know, I didn't track him. What would Tammy or Chad tell you? That he just had conferences all over the place. He's been to Idaho, Utah, Arizona. I don't know what other states he went to. Okay. But those are the three that you remember. I do remember those. Right. And uh, did your sister uh, help publish these books? Yes, she did. And, and so that was after the Spring Book Company went bankrupt, they tried to... Uh, make it go again? Yeah, they still tried to write books and they found other distributors. So this was basically like their bread and butter. They did books, traveled around, tried to sell them. 
and he was Mr. Spiritual, so he would go to conferences and try to sell the books. I mean, I respect the hustle, but at the same time, there's better ways to do it. I mean, there's the age of the internet now. You can sell your books online, I feel like, but, you know, that's just my opinion. Uh, most of them are fictional about uh, what they feel like. Uh, one time he said, everything that I've read is true, or everything that I've written is true. Uh, I don't know about that statement. Okay. He never said that to you. Personally, I don't recall him ever saying that. Okay. Now, these, uh, these books are... Uh, the content of them, uh, that it wasn't something that that uh, you were enamored with. Um, I'm a, an avid reader, and so I read lots of different things. I, you know, I would read some to support him, but I also teach school, and I don't have time to always read all the things that get published and put out there. Yeah. Your sister, Tammy, uh, w w did she believe what Chad was writing was true? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> did, did she tell you that it was fiction? It's, just, it's really just made up stuff. Well, a lot of it was b based on what he probably felt would happen in the future, but it was still a fictional story. With okay. Yeah, all these books with like predictions and end days and all that stuff, you know. If another guy is writing about it, you still have to take it with a little grain of salt. Yeah. But I think what they're getting, what they're trying to get at here is that he really believed in the stuff that he was doing. It wasn't like he was out there faking it. He really, truly believed in his religious work, which may be what drove him to do all this crazy shit or influence people to do all this crazy shit. But let's continue. I think you said you never went to any of these conferences or seminars that he would speak at? No. Okay. And Tammy, as far as you know, did not go to any as well. Well, I, I'm sure maybe she went to a couple of them, but for the most part, she didn't go to all of them. You know why he would not, not be looking for a job other than writing books? Um, I don't. Now, these visits that you had with your... Uh, sister that you've talked about were those in the summer of 2019 before she died which visits are you referring to uh, June or July of 2019 a visit when your sister came and something was off with Chad yeah that happened in June they uh, came and stayed with us at the June of 2019 yes they were they had come down from Idaho to celebrate uh, Chad's mom's birthday um, his parents live in our same town, and they still... Which is weird. They moved away and all of that. He moved there away from her sister and his parents. It was like he was just isolating everybody. He stayed with us for part of that visit. And then, was there another visit just a month later in yes, July? Yes, in, in July, but we didn't know they were in town. They were... Uh, they had written, not written a book, but they had published a book for another author that there was a movie premiere tied to that book, but I hadn't heard about it. It was for the fighting preacher, and they happened to be in town for that, um, and they just showed up at our door to give me my birthday present. And, and that was when Chad would not come in to visit with you? Correct. He sat in his car. And that was unusual. It was very unusual. Uh, and then the last time you, or the next time. I mean, maybe you just didn't want to hop out. Nah, but if you if you haven't seen the sister for a while, it's kind of like, oh, hey, how you been doing? This and that, what's up? Give her a little hug. Give her a little, how you been doing? So, eh, yeah, maybe he was pissed. You know, maybe he was angry at the time, but yeah. A little unusual. The time you saw your sister was in October of 2019? Correct. And that was also in Utah? Yes. And, and Tammy looked healthy and fine? Yes, yeah, she did. Damn. Did she ever say to you, my husband has had a vision that I'm going to die? No, she never mentioned that to me at all. 
Don't tell me. Don't tell me he's up in here telling them that he had visions that she was going to die and then she died. And he just had to get rid of Like, come on. Would you be he had surprised to, quickly to hear anything like that coming from your sister? Um, yeah, I would be surprised by that. As far as you know, Tammy had a full life, a uh, healthy, happy person. Yeah. She was not <clears throat> making arrangements to die. <laughs> no. No. And uh, and so when Chad told you she was coughing and died, uh, did you suspect something off? Um, I felt um, like, and I wasn't sure why, but I did. I felt like something had happened to her, and I didn't even know why. I had no reason to suspect Chad. I had no reason to suspect anything, but I do feel, as a spiritual person some, myself, that my sister was telling me that something had happened to her. Did your sister tell you about being shot at? Uh, yes, they told us that it, some kid was pranking with a paintball gun because that's what they were told. And so your visit with... Damn, they were shooting at her? Like, what is going on here? And for him to say that he saw her die in a vision and she dies, that should be number one for the police to want to get you. Like, come on, bro, you're not psychic. Like... If your sister Tammy was uh, after the the paintball no, shooting. No, it was before the paintball shooting that happened after. Ms. Williams, can you please make sure to wait until Mr. Archibald... Oh, okay, to thank you. Ms. Okay, Ms. Williams. Sorry. When anyone's talking, please. I know it's difficult and stressful, but please wait until the question's completed. It just helps our court reporter to keep the record. All right, thank, thank you. you. Sorry. No, sorry about that. So, so your visit with your sister Tammy in October of 2019, your personal visit face-to-face, -face, was before the paintball incident? Correct. And so you must have talked to her on the phone then after the paintball incident? Correct. No, we didn't talk on the phone. We messaged. Okay. Oh, wow. They weren't even talking after that. So that was literally the last time they spoke is when she saw her and she looked well. So the, and texting or? Yes. All right. So after uh, Chad remarried, uh, did you meet his his new wife? No. Thank God. They uh, left for Hawaii. And they get married in two weeks. I mean, they meet each other. They get married in two weeks. Then they go on a honeymoon in Hawaii. That is crazy. By the way, I'll be in Hawaii. Um, next month. So that'll be fun. I'll bring some videos to y'all. Uh, make sure you hit me up in the comments and tell me what you guys want to see. We might go venison hunting. Um, we're going to do a lot of stuff. I might have an interview with a woman who actually knew Alex Murdaugh. So that's going to be cool. And um, yeah, it's going to be fun. So stay tuned for that. Partly right, after so. we found out. So I never, I've never met her. It was also a trip to Knott's Berry Farm. Correct. That they took uh, over Thanksgiving. Okay. So the end of November of 2019, uh, Chad and Lori and all of Chad's kids went to Knott's Berry Farm. Is that right? Uh, that was part of their trip, I believe. They, you know, went to the beach and things too. Okay. And so, and how would you have learned about that? Uh, Chad told us. All right. Did you see photos of that event? No, I didn't. From Chad's kids. Did you hear from Chad's kids about uh, that? Yeah, they had told us about it. I think they actually, uh, a couple of their kids showed us pictures of them at the beach, but I didn't see anything else past that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the update. That was the sister of Chad Daybell's wife. Now, we're going to keep going in this Lori Daybell case as it unfolds. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know, if you have a sister who's married to a weird, creepy-ass fool like that, best thing you do is ruin that relationship as soon as you can and get your sister out of there, y'all. Stay safe. Stay inside. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.